So welcome to the channel and in this new playlist we're going to be having a look at another great British classic, the Triumph TR6. In this episode on the playlist we're going to be having a look at the suspension and tube shock conversion. One of the most popular upgrades to the TR6 is to improve the suspension package, often driven by a desire to improve the firmness of the rear suspension. Several different options are available, we'll explore those here, have a look at the different merits of each and how easy they are to fit. Of course, it helps if you have a ramp like I have here to get the car up in the air to make working easier, but that's not essential. The car can be just as easy to work on while it's on axle stands, it just means you're going to have to get down on the floor to get access to some of the components. While you've got the suspension off, consider a popular poly bush upgrade for all of the rubber bushes and we'll explore the merits of that and where the bushes go as well. One of the popular upgrades for a, a TR6 is uh, an adjustable tube shock conversion. So we're going to take a look at that and what that involves in a little bit more depth, starting with the front. So this car has had a uh, tube shock, adjustable tube shock conversion. Uh, so on the front, it's a really easy change. So first of all, we've got our top shock mount here. We've got two bolts that need to be, uh, two nuts, I should say, that need to be undone and removed. Then you can come underneath the wishbone at the front and remove these four nuts at the bottom uh, that hold on the lower uh, mounting. Once you've undone those four bolts, this lower mounting bracket will slide off the pins and the whole shock should be able to be removed from underneath the wishbone. It can then be replaced with your new shocker and pushed and re refitted in the reverse order. The only criticism I would make of the uh, adjustable shocks, certainly on, on this particular version, is you can probably just make out the adjuster wheel uh, that's inside the coil spring here. Access is not particularly brilliant, although uh, you can get your fingers in there to adjust the clicks on the front damper. Overall, the ride and handling with a tube shock conversion is vastly improved. Uh, you don't get the rear squat on acceleration that TR6s are renowned for. Uh, you can tune the car to your, your cornering or your style of driving by stiffening up the front end or, or stiffening up the, the rear end to increase oversteer or understeer to your preference. So there's three different types of rear tube shock conversion available, often referred to as type 1, 2 and, and, and type 3. So let's have a look at what each of those involve. So first of all, type 1. A type 1 tube shock conversion is simply taking the bottom of the shock off the rear mounting on the wishbone and then fitting a bracket into the inner wheel arch, screwing that through and then mounting your damper up to suit. One of the risks with this type of conversion is that as the wheel is moving up and down, all of the load through that damper is going up and into the bodywork. So in effect, the car, the chassis is trying to push the body uh, off the chassis. And potentially that might lead to early failures if, if you, your typical driving style is a bit more aggressive. One of the benefits of this conversion is of course, it's very cheap. You just need to pay for the damper and one bracket. The type two conversion is a little bit more involved. The type two conversion uses a fabricated bracket to mount off the existing Armstrong lever arm damper mountings, which are here. Uh, the bracket then comes up, comes up on the inside of the inner arch and then creates a mounting for the top of the damper. So the damper is mounted to the bracket and the bracket is then attached to the existing rear damper mounts. The lower mounting is as per this, it's mounted to the back of the trailing arm. The benefits to this are that the mounting is, it has a little bit more strength, you're going off the chassis as well, so there's no risk to pushing the bodywork off. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive, but it's a relatively quick fit procedure to be able to do that. The final type of conversion is a type 3 conversion. Uh, that's what this car's fitted with, so let's have a look at that. 
The Type 3 conversion, like the Type 2, is mounted off the existing rear suspension mounts. You can see this box section here, which is bolted through onto the suspension mounts. That comes up and sits in the bottom of the body here. There's then an inner section which mounts within the boot and requires the tank to be taken out in order to fit. Let's have a look at that. So the internal suspension brackets, uh, to fit those, the easiest thing to do is to, to take the tank out. So uh, let's have a look at how you take the tank out. There's a few connections you have to look at uh, when taking the tank off. So let's see if we can get at those, use some light here. So you've got on the PI system, you've got the, uh, the PRV overflow and you've got the tank return. So both of those will need to be disconnected either at the, uh, the junction or at the pipe. Uh, the junction is best into the tank just to give you the clearance. Uh, you need to disconnect the main fuel filler as well. That's just a flat blade screwdriver just to release the clip. And then you can pull the uh, filler out through the top of the bodywork. Here you can see the, uh, the, the fuel sender. So uh, two connectors there, just easy to dis disconnect. And then once that's done, we can move on to the bolts. So over here, we've got our first bolt uh, down the side and there's one on the opposite side as well. Uh, you can see at the back there, we've got another bolt and there's one on the opposing side as well. And then underneath the tank, uh, you've got bolts. You could probably just make out one there. And then easier to see is the one on the other side there. So six bolts in total to remove and then the tank will come away freely. Uh, it's worth doing to get access to the suspension. Uh, it will take probably half an hour to an hour to do, uh, and probably the only other thing that you need to be really mindful of, of course, is it's a fuel tank. So uh, drain it as much as you can beforehand, and if necessary, uh, get a pot underneath and make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and drain out as much of the fuel as you can uh, before you take it out uh, because of the weight that you'll have to manipulate around. So once you have got the tank out, you'll be able to get access then much easier than in this video appreciated uh, to the rear of the tank area uh, that butts up against the rear uh, wheel footwell wall as well. Um, so what you can do then is put the bracket into place, uh, use that as a guide underneath to, to drill the holes. And there is a total of eight bolts, four into the, the side and four into the floor that we need screwing to secure this piece of the Type 3 conversion. Once the inner bracket is mounted, you can then mount this bracket through the bulkhead into that, uh, and then that creates the top mount for the shock. So one of the disadvantages of this system is it takes a lot longer to fit. There's more work involved in doing it, but the benefits are you end up with a, a stronger mechanism that comes off the existing chassis mount uh, and then into the, the, the bodywork. It's said that with a Type 3 conversion, generally you can fit slightly wider tyres onto, uh, onto the rear, whereas the Type 2, uh, because it sits a little bit further out, means you can, can only have a limited tyre size. Uh, let's have a look how much gap we've got. So this is a Type 3 conversion, and uh, as you can see here, you can see the adjustable shock, you can see it going up and uh, you can see around a two inch gap, I would say, between the uh, tube shock here and uh, and the rear tire. Uh, the rear tires on this particular car are 195, 65, 15. So uh, that gives you an idea of how much space you may have to play with. See, the adjuster wheel on the uh, rear tube shock is nice and easy to access here. Uh, this is a SPAX conversion and to give you an idea I've got this set at about three clicks up from the bottom on the front and on the rear and that tends to give a nice supple ride uh, without too much bob but certainly feeling safe and secure in a cornering situation. If you do need to replace the bushes uh, one of the popular upgrades as you can see on this car is to go for poly bushes so we have poly bushes on the top wishbone, on the top of the damper. There are poly bushes to locate the lower wishbone to the chassis. Poly bushes on the front anti-roll bar mounting and also on the tie rod mounting here.
Then on the rear of the trailing arm, you have two poly bushes, one each side. Also consider as you put the springs, you can get poly bush mounts for the top and the bottom of the road springs. Finally, you can get poly bush replacements for the four differential mountings here, 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 and here. So this particular car is equipped with adjustable rear trailing arm mounting brackets. So the standard car has a choice of three brackets either side. So you can choose between high, medium and low height setting for the two sides. And depending on the combination of the two brackets that you get, that will adjust the pitch of the trailing arm and that will have an effect on the camber of the rear wheel. So depending on the height that you've got the suspension setting on or whether you're setting up from standard, you'll need to adjust this. One of the things that can make life much easier are these adjustable brackets. Uh, by fitting these, uh, what it allows you to do is loosen off the bolt and then use a spanner to tighten up the bolt uh, and then through this adjustment, move the mechanism up and down to suit. So I use a small digital camber measuring angle tool, put that onto the wheel and then adjust these to suit. One of the big benefits of that is it can save considerable amounts of time lifting and lowering the car or changing brackets. As changing these brackets is not the easiest things to do. Uh, you have to undo these bolts at the back and then slide that out to get, to get the bolts out. So uh, this makes life considerably easier. Once again, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe. Please do like the video. Please do comment. Love reading the comments and, uh, and replying and getting involved with you all. Until next time.